Hello and welcome to class. Today's class is going to take place um, mostly from the seated position. I'm seated on kind of like a, a little poof thing in our living room, um, but if you want any type of chair or block or stool or whatever, totally fine. Um, if you want to stay seated the entire time, you a thousand percent can for this class. The, the whole approach of uh, most every one of my classes um, is that I give it tiered levels of difficulty so that if you're wanting to really push it, you certainly can. And if you're um, working back into it, then you can totally do that too. Okay, so here we are. We're in a seated position. Um, first place is we're just going to kind of calm the mind, center the self for a bit. All the air out of the body. <sighs> Get out the last of the fidgets and the wiggles and whatever it is that you need to do. Eventually the eyes are closed. Good, and first you have to start to notice where your attention goes. Right, maybe it's uncomfortable for you to sit in silence. And then my whole approach to the mental work of what we do in this is to deepen the amount of attention that we have in this current physical space um, rather than thinking about what's coming up next or what we've done in the past or trying to predict what we're going to do in the class. And the whole idea for me with yoga is that we are having a conversation with the body. And just like when we have a conversation with another human, uh, the best conversations happen when you have someone's full and undivided attention. So same type of thing here. We just want to make sure that we're 100% right here. So I find the easiest way to do that is to start just picking up details about what you hear and what you feel physically, right? Your feet on the ground, maybe certain muscles are talking, the clothes on your skin, the temperature of the air. And then start to notice how you breathe, right? How does the air come in? How does the air go out? Really start to pick up details about that mechanism, right? Does it, can you feel specific muscles pull the air in? Can you feel specific muscles push the air out? Right? How are you doing this? Just a few more moments here. Um, all of my classes uh, on my end of the audio is going to be without music so that you can hear perfectly what it is that uh, I'm saying and that there's no um, loss because of music laid over the top. But I a thousand percent recommend you play some jams. Um, I have free playlists available on my Spotify account, just at Mark Folsom. You can do any of those that you possibly want um, or anything that you want to. Just um, let some music that makes you feel good uh, happen in the space, okay? Otherwise, we're gonna get a little bit of movement. Let's start first with just some fingers and some toes, just however you wanna move them, just wiggle them around. And then your jaw, open your mouth really wide. And we'll wiggle side to side. Good, and then we'll start from the top. We're gonna go all the way down to the bottom. We'll start with your neck, just ear to shoulder, chin to shoulder. Big circle all the way up and around one way. Then you reset and go the other way. Breathing the whole time. And notice how the rest of my body is staying pretty still, right? We just want to isolate each piece of this body uh, bit by bit rather than having it all work together. We'll have things that work together, but not right now. Okay, that's the neck. We'll continue into the rest of the spine with some cat cows, so stay this way. I'm just going to turn so you can see what's happening in my spine. Chin to chest, you round. I like to hold on to my knees or grab under my thighs so I can round really hard through this. And then when I arch, I'm getting my chest up towards the ceiling. And I don't just crunch. I don't just collapse into the back. I want you to think when you're arching through this, it should feel like opening through the front, not crunchiness in the back. So if there's any spot that does feel crunchy, don't do that. <laughs> Avoid that spot, okay? Back and forth through cat-cow. Breathing through it. Good. Now, traditionally in yoga, keep moving. Um, every time we think about expanding, so especially right here in cow, that's when we usually want to inhale. And then on the exhale, it's when you're contracting, you're getting smaller. But as my practice has grown, I realize it doesn't matter. <laughs> it really doesn't. I want you to be good at breathing at all points, right? You should be able to have a good inhale and a good exhale constantly, however you wish, okay? So as long as you're breathing fully, that's the plan. No breathing equals bad. 
Okay? All right, enough of that. A little bit of shoulder blade action. So elbows tucked in nice and tight. You're gonna carve out some space with the shoulder blades one way and then the other way. Just kind of rolling back and forth. And again, if you're confused, I'm turning here. I'm not cat cowing. I'm just letting my shoulder blades carve a huge circle in both directions. Okay, for three, for two. Good, elbows, tuck them in tight. We'll supinate and pronate. So my elbows stay pinned into the body, but I'm flipping my palms up, flipping my palms down. Okay, for three, for two. Good, reach your hands towards me. Excellent, now try and get your own fingernails to your face. And then one finger at a time, pinkies touch the palms, reset, rings, reset, middles, reset, pointers, reset, thumbs, and we'll go the opposite way. Pointers, middles, rings, pinkies. And you can just do this at your own pacing, aiming to make physical contact, and it's gonna feel uncomfortable, okay? But if anything feels like sharp, pinchy pain, we stop. Part of this conversation idea is figuring out for you what's just uncomfortable because we haven't done it, what's difficult because it's, it's a challenging but beneficial type of sensation versus, ooh, this is uncomfortable and I need to stop. Okay, and that is going to be up to you because I unfortunately cannot feel what you're feeling. Okay, three, two, and relax. Check that out. A little bit more upper body. Great big bear hug, however you want to do it. Big breath. And as you exhale, twist one way. Center, big breath, as you exhale, twist the other way. A couple of times, and each time, again, as you notice me, I'm not letting my body wiggle around or cat-cow. I'm staying really tall, and all I'm doing is rotating, pointing the elbows through center, pointing the elbows. Each time, you're trying to get those elbows to travel a little more distance, just percentage points at a time. Breathing throughout. Okay, just finish this up for three, for two. And then once you feel even side to side, uh, this is Wolf, we're gonna be occasionally joined by some animals here since we're all enjoying this lovely quarantine. So the big boy here is Wolf. Um, time for low body. So you're gonna plant your feet nice and solid. Um, just like we did in the fingertips, we're gonna try and have our toes do individual things. So first, hands on your knees so that your knees can't wiggle. Press your feet down into the floor. Balls of the feet stay down, but all of your toes lift up. All of your toes come down. All of them come up. All of them come down. Do that a couple times. Relax your fingers, relax your face. And now, like little piano keys, all of them are up. Start from the outside. Pinkies rolling into the big toe. Reset, back up. And I'm just showing you with my fingers because it's sometimes hard to see what my toes are doing. Um, but otherwise, your fingers stay nice and still. So little piano keys. And now all of the toes are up. Keep them all up, just the big toes come down, big toes come up, big toes down, big toes up, big toes down, big toes up. And now keep the big toes down, the other four toes down, up, down, up. So that big toe is pressed down into the floor super hard, but the other four are coming up as high as they can go and down as low as they can go, okay? Big toes pushing really hard for three, for two, and relax. Good. Cross an angle. I don't care how you do it. They can look like this. If it's uncomfortable, you can prop it on something, but I just need your heel to float a little bit, and we're going to carve out a big circle in the ankle one way and the other way. Smooth that out. Try and uh, dig into those spots that feel a little stuttery, that feel like jittery. I want you to smooth that out as much as you possibly can. For three, for two. Okay, good. Switch. Nothing fancy. Just carve out that ankle space one way and the other way. Breathing. For three. For two. Okay, good. Once that feels happy, plant your feet. Plant your feet really wide. We're going to get a little bit of inner hip action here. Either hands to your knees or forearms to your knees. I'm going to do forearms, I think. Push the knees out, and then you're gonna find a little twist, but yes, my chest is moving, but if you think about where your shoulders are and where your hip joints are, they can do very, very similar things. So you're pushing the knees out, and then I want your right hip to push deep towards the opposite knee, and then your left hip to push towards the opposite knee. 
And so you're pushing the knees out the whole time, but it's really from the hips. You're trying to find that inner hip sensation as you push one and the other for three, for two, and good. Within that space, legs are going to come out in front of you. You might have to get yourself a little closer to the edge of your seat here. And all we're going to do is flex the feet and point the feet. Flex, point, flex, and point. We're going to do that a couple of times. So the knees are going to have a little bit of movement. That's totally okay. But I want the main focus to be, can you get your toes as close to you as you can? And then when you point the toes, try and point and curl them all the way underneath the foot. Breath. For three, for two. Okay, good. Come back into your neutral seat, a little bit of side body action. One hand holds onto your seat or your hip. Other arm's gonna go all the way up and over. Big side body stretch. And within this, a little bit of cat cow. Just open up the side. If this feels too uncomfortable, you can hold on to your rib cage. The arm doesn't have to go up. Okay, breath. Three, two, and then the other side up and over. Again, if that feels terrible, just bring that hand down. We just want to put space through the side of the body. And that's going to be different for everyone. Some people might feel it in their upper back, or in their low back, or in their obliques, or in between their rib bones. All of it's good. Keep breathing. Breath for three, for two. Okay, good. Gently, um, we're going to bring ourselves to a standing position, but again, if you want to stay seated the whole time, you certainly can. You're just going to mimic what the shape looks like in our bodies from when we're standing. Okay, so here we are. First piece of this is you're going to stand nice and tall, and exactly like how we just did when we were seated, you're going to rise up on your tippy toes and come down. Okay, and if balance is an issue for you, go to any place in your house, wall, couch, something, and make balance not an issue for you. You want to get better at it, so as little help as you possibly can, but if it's preventing you from playing the game entirely, then we're going to let something help us a little bit. Okay, breath, down and up, for three, for two, and down, good. Nice wide feet now, take your time, but my knees and toes are facing forward, okay? Within this position, we're wide enough where it's like, yeah, I'm getting towards the end of my range here, but we're not so wide that we're uncomfortable. Hands are going to come to your hips. I want you to close your eyes, and you're just going to move your hips in a huge circle one way, and then up and around the other way. And you're going to do that a couple of times. And really, the circle is just um, a, a very broad approach to figuring out on you where you feel sensation. And then eventually, like for me, I feel stuff right here. And then I'm going to spend a little bit of time in that particular pocket. Same goes for you. As you're exploring, right, and there's nobody watching you, so you don't need to feel like uncomfortable or self-conscious about any of this stuff. I just want you to figure out, okay, what feels good? What feels tight? What needs a little bit of love as I shift forwards or backwards or left or right? Okay, for three for two. Okay, good. A little bit of horse. So you're going to bring your feet in a little bit more. Hands are going to come to your thighs, and we're going to sit down into a squat. If this is too uncomfortable, look where my butt is. Boom. It's right on that seat. Okay, and you can do the same type of thing where you're pushing your knees out. Otherwise, you're off the seat, and we're going to find little twists, kind of like what we did before, but this is more of an emphasis of getting the shoulders across the body. You might feel some sensation in the hips or the low back. Let yourself just breathe through that. For three. For two. When you're balanced, keep your legs as they are. Just stand all the way up. Hands come to your heart. Big breath in. As you exhale, your hands stay here. But now we're going to sit down into the depth that we just found. And then come back up. And the goal here is as you inhale, you come up. As you exhale, you sit down. Go at your own pace. I want you to start digging a little bit deeper, getting the legs nice and toasty. And you notice how my knees are not collapsing in? That is what I want for you. I want the knees to be moving where the toes are pointing as you go down and up. Okay. So as you push, the knees go out. As you come in, the knees slide in in that same straight line. Okay. Breath. 
For three. For two. Now I want you to hold it and find a spot that's maintainable. And that might be up here, and that's okay. Otherwise, we find the depth where we're at a challenging level. And now I want you to squeeze your heels towards each other so your hamstrings, your quads, your booty should turn on. A little bit lower, a little bit harder to squeeze. Feet squeezing in. Five, four, three, two, and stand up. Whoo, toasty. All right, now, just like how we did before, knees and toes are facing this way, but now we're gonna do a little bit more of a pigeon toe. Okay, so a little bit of knees and toes facing in, as much as it feels comfortable to you. Okay, I've got a lot of rotation through here, so mine's gonna point a fair amount in. Same exact game that we played before. I'm gonna carve out a huge circle one way and the other way. And because we changed the rotation of the femur, the great big upper leg bone in the hip socket, odds are you're gonna be feeling some different sensation in different areas. But then notice how I'm just gonna like let myself play. All right, where do I feel things? And every day it's probably gonna be different. Okay, depending on what you did yesterday, what you did during the week. Let yourself breathe. For three. For two. Okay, good. When that feels pretty balanced, come all the way out of it. Now, exactly like we did when we were seated, you're gonna find a big side body stretch all the way up and over. I like to just hold on here. And again, if this feels terrible going up and over, you can just do a big bear hug. I want you to find a side body one way until you feel a stretch, come up, and then side body the other way. I'm just gonna do this a couple of times. Okay, reaching one way, big breaths. And the other way, big breaths, just for three, just for two. Once you feel balanced, and again, you can always slow this down. You don't have to stay precisely with me. Uh, yoga needs to be a personal practice. It needs to be what you're feeling in the day at the time, okay? Very, very similar game, but now hands are at your hips, and you're gonna push hips as far as you can to one side, so the goal here is we're putting space between about rib cage and mid thigh. So you might feel some glute, you might feel some low back, but within this now, I want you to cat cow, kind of push your hips forwards and backwards, breath, and then you go to the other side when you feel ready. Okay, and everybody's gonna be a little bit different, so don't worry about the rightness of this, just what are you feeling? Does it feel good to hinge more or less? Again, breathing the whole time. Breath is the main communicative factor that we have with the body because you can override it mentally. You can be in charge of it physically, all right? And so then we let the body know that what we're doing is on purpose when we breathe. When we stop breathing, the body's like, I don't trust this guy. I don't trust this person that's telling me to do these things. Okay, for three, for two. Okay, good, shake that out. Lateral stuff starting to feel a little warmed up. So now we need to work on front side and back side a little bit. So take your time with this. Um, and again, if you ever need to come to a seat or you need to come to your knees or any of that stuff, totally fine. We're gonna set up in a really, really light warrior one. So here's how I set myself up into warrior one. I bring my feet wide forwards and backwards and my back heel is on the ground, okay? So from the side here, and actually maybe I'll face you first. My hips are gonna wanna open and I want you to keep that heel down and try and square everything off towards me. If that makes your knee feel uncomfortable or your ankle feel uncomfortable, move. We need to feel some stuff in the hips. Um, that strong core activation where I want you to tuck your tail a little bit is we want to start feeling some stuff through this part of the hip. So if you're not feeling it, adjust, 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 go shorter, go wider, go shorter, go wider. Anything that you need until eventually when we square up, and we tuck the tail, we can feel some stretch through here. Now, if having the heel down is horribly uncomfortable, guess what? That heel can go up, right? So if we're wanting to find some stuff through the hip, how do you get yourself in a position where you're feeling front line hip start to open? Not low back crunchiness, not anything weird through here. So if this is an uncomfortable position for you, get yourself in a position where you can use the couch or you can use the little poof, or you can set yourself up so that there's balance that is affordable to you, right? There's something that's helping you find a stretch through the front line of the hip, okay? <laughs> I know I'm talking incessantly about all this stuff, but I get a lot of um, concerns about things being too challenging um, or things being not approachable. 
You can always take something and break it down so long as you know the goal. And if our goal is open this front line, boom, that's it. Whatever you need to do to open that front line, that's what we're doing. Okay, look out, little guy. Look out, look out. All right, so we're in this spot. Heel down if we're in that warrior one, but again, whatever's gonna give you front line action. A little tail tuck so your belly's nice and strong. And then guess what? It's the same type of game that we've been playing. You're gonna go a little forwards, backwards, side to side. Let yourself breathe, and we want to feel hip. This is a big hip focus class today. Okay, for three, for two. And now I want you to find and hold the position where you feel the most significant amount of, of work happening in that front part of the hip. Okay, so for me, it's right about here. And then all we're going to do is stay stationary, and again, holding on to something if you need it. But I want you to squeeze your feet towards each other and push the feet apart. And look how I'm not really moving, I'm just changing the engagement. I squeeze my feet towards each other, I push them apart. I squeeze them in, I push them apart. So you're gonna get your legs feeling really toasty. If at any point you need to take a break, you can totally, totally do that. Okay, breath for three, for two. Good, come on out of that, shake that out. We're just gonna do it on the other side. Okay, so set yourself up. Remember all the discussion we just had? How do you get now the opposite front side of the hip to start talking? If that's heel down, great. If that's heel up, great. If that's you needing to lean on something and push the hips down and figure out, okay, how do I get this to start talking? Totally, totally fine, okay? Let yourself move, let yourself shift. And I think I go into a lot of details about this stuff too because the fitness world in general puts up barriers purposefully, right? It makes you do all of these big jumps and all these hard things. And that is never what I think fitness should be. I think if you enjoy that stuff, that's great. But fitness and the, the full on terminology of it is growth for all humans and all bodies at all stages. Um, so there's always a way to get into a spot where it's working for you. And if you can't figure it out, um, in these videos, you can contact me directly and I'll help out, okay? Little tail tuck, strong belly, and then once you find that spot where you're like, mm, there it is. And it might be the, the top of the hip, it might be quad, it might be stuff going all through here, it might even be some strong belly through here, and that's fine. And then you squeeze the feet towards each other and push them apart, all right? So I'm changing the engagement as I push and as I squeeze, but I'm not necessarily moving, right? That's another big thing. Keep going through the, through the squeeze and the pulls. Another big thing for me in my practice is I don't care what it looks like, ever, right? It's not about aesthetic for me. It's what is the goal? What's the objective? Okay, so as we engage here, why we're doing this squish and this push is we want to get more mobility, so a deeper layer of stretch. We want to have the body be able to do these positions, but we want to be able to engage in them and be strong in them just as much as we want to have the flexibility to do that, okay? Breath for three, for two. Okay, good. Come on out of that. Shake that out a little bit. Good. We're going to do a little bit of upper body stuff. So either great big bear hug or eagle arms. So eagle arms, you're crossed at the elbows and you're reaching for your fingertips and maybe they touch, maybe they bind, okay? But again, if that feels horrible or looks bizarre, just give yourself a great, great big bear hug. I want you to stay facing this way, but I'm going to show you. You're going to sit your butt back, round into a tiny little ball through the upper body. Okay, I need your hips to stay below your heart the whole time, but you can totally allow yourself to shift or move or round. And again, if you're like, Mark, you're getting a little crazy. No, I'm not. We have our seat right? You can do the exact same thing so long as it's accomplishing what we're asking you to do, which in this particular case is open up the back side of the body. And that could be upper back, low back, right? Anything shifting side to side, breath for three, for two. Good. Bring yourself out of that. Shake it out. We'll do eagle arms or big bear hug on the other side, okay? Let yourself shift down into it. A little bit of movement, a little bit of wiggle, breathing, moving, shifting dynamically, breath. For three, for two. And good, when that feels balanced, come on out of it, shake that out. 
whatever you need to do here. Um, opposite side of the foot now. Again, if you need balance things, that's fine. Otherwise, top of the foot is down, and I want you to push the ankle straight forward into the floor. So we're either feeling a big stretch to the foot, or the shin, or the ankle. So all of this stuff is starting to open. Breathe. And you can kind of wiggle around, and it should feel good. This shouldn't feel like crazy intense. If it does, stop. Okay, breath. We're not necessarily stop, but ease out of it, right? The body's always going to tell you, hey, too much. And you'll be like, gotcha, I heard you, and back off. Okay, shake that out. Go to the other side. It's again, like when you're having a conversation with another human, if that other human says, hey, I'm uncomfortable having this conversation, you're not going to be like, so what, man? Suck it up. You're going to be like, oh. Okay, cool. Let's approach from a different perspective. Let's back off a little bit and then ease our way back in. Okay. Breath. For three. For two. Okay, good. Shake that up. Now, we're feeling nice and warmed up. We go into warrior two, one of my favorite poses. So warrior two, and again, my body's going to look different than yours. What I need to happen is this front knee that's bending is pointing with your toes, and they're all facing straight forward. That's it. That's the only thing that I need. The other stuff, this leg can kind of be in or out, but the goal here is to feel some opening through this inner part of the body. Inner hip here, inner hip here, maybe some hamstring, but in the same way that we did throughout this class, hands to your hips, and you're going to allow yourself to shift and roll and move and cat-cow. Okay, and then when you find some pockets that feel kind of intense, like for me, it's right about there, I'm going to squeeze my feet towards each other and push them apart. And squeeze them in and push them apart. And you can do the, the squeeze as hard as you want, which can also be like 2%. <laughs> That's totally fine, right? You work your way up to a level of comfortability for you, not for me, not for anything else, just for what you're doing in this time. Okay, breath, three, two, and come on out of it, shake that out as necessary, we go to the other side, okay? Set yourself up, what's the one thing that I need? Front knee, front toes. They're all facing this way. There's sometimes a tendency for this knee to want to start doing just bananas weird stuff. Does that look like a healthy good time? It does not. Knee with the toe, okay? But as far as this back leg, it can be straight, it can be bent, you can close it up, you can move it up. But we want to feel some over, opening through here, some opening through here. Let yourself do all of that dynamic movement that we've done in the past. And then for you, it might be a different pocket, right? This side might feel different. So for me, I kind of feel stuff here, and I'm going to hold, and I'm going to squeeze my feet towards each other and push them apart. And squeeze in and push them apart. And you feel your butt engage, feel your hamstrings engage. You just want to be strong through your legs in these positions. Okay, so something that sometimes feels tight is not necessarily because it needs to become loose, right? Even talking about tight and loose, it doesn't really make any sense for what's, what's actually happening physically in the body. So a, a lot of the time, the, the central nervous system will tell the body or tell you here that something feels icky or tight because you do not have the strength to go into a certain range of motion. So how do we overcome that? We tell the body, you know what, I'm going to engage, I'm going to squeeze and push, I'm going to show you, central nervous system, that I have strength to be in this position, and then that icky feeling will become less and less and less and less and then go away. Okay? When you feel balanced on this, come on out, shake that out. Legs might be feeling a little shaky, might be feeling a little tired, okay? Hips as far to one side, hips as far to the other side as you want, just a couple times. Breath, for three, for two. Okay, cool. Here comes our big, big flow piece. So we're going to go back into Warrior Two on this side. What's the one thing I need? Knees and toes, right? In this position, you go to a depth where you're feeling sensation, but you're in control of it, right? We're not overwhelmed. We're not overwhelming the central nervous system. We're in this position. Here's the flow. First is a reverse, just like we've done throughout the beginning of class. Big old stretch. If this feels uncomfortable, just hold on to your rib cage. You're trying to keep the legs in a stationary position so they're not just moving all sorts of wiggly wobbly. The only thing that's moving is your torso and midline. Big breath. And then as you exhale, we come into side angle. A couple different variations of side angle. You can rest on the forearm, right? Top arm's gonna reach. Or you start thinking, how low can I get with control, right? 
And so my practice is going to look different than yours. As I go back and forth through these things, where I feel sensation, where I feel strength, is going to be radically different from where you're feeling things. Okay, And you're just going back and forth, allowing yourself to breathe. So if yours looks a little bit something like this, that is amazing. Okay, Again, could care less about the aesthetic or the look of what's going on in the body. What are you feeling? What are you experiencing? Are you breathing dynamically? And each time, can you gain a little bit more? And that gain might be a better stretch. It might be like, ooh, my legs are real toasty. Or you might be feeling some strength through all of this midsection through here, through your obliques. All of that is lovely and amazing. Okay, for three, for two. And then once that feels pretty good and you feel balanced, come out of it, shake it out, do your thing. And then the other side, right? That's the fun thing about two sides. All right, we get to enjoy the party on the first side and then we get to enjoy it maybe on the second side. Okay, so we know what the flow is. You might be feeling similar things because we've been doing similar things to the upper body, but odds are your hips are gonna be a different game. All right, and you see what I'm doing with my arms here? Like the arm reach is only a beneficial tool if it's a beneficial tool, right? It's a, it's a little catch-22 in terms of like, the tool works for you if the tool works for you. I can't guarantee if the tool's gonna work for you because I don't know, right? So you're reaching, you're finding some depth. What's the thing that I need the whole time? Front knee, front toes are pointing in that same forward direction, allowing yourself to breathe, allowing yourself to just take some ownership of it. Like I always hope that what comes out of my mouth is just gold knowledge always. Odds are, it probably is not going to be all of the time. So as I give you, hopefully, this tool or this pose, you're going to allow yourself to shift, allow yourself to run around like a crazy cat in it, whatever you need to do, okay? For three, for two. And once that feels balanced to you, come on out of it. You should be feeling a little toasty, all right? Shift that out, forwards and backwards, shake that out as needed, okay? We're gonna go back into our seated position. And again, if you wanna use your little chair situation, you certainly can. Otherwise, we're down into a horse squat. Hands to your thighs, twist one way, twist the other way. For three, for two. And then when you are ready, we're all going to take a seat. All right. We made it through the, the most difficult part of all of this. Here's what I want us to do first. I want you to sit far back enough on your seat, whatever that is, so that your arms can kind of be in front of you or at least be pushing the knees out to the sides. Um, what we're doing here is, is a seated bear sit, okay? So bear sit, knees are really wide. Your arms are gonna be strong and ideally they can be reinforced onto something, whether that's your chair or whatever, okay? First piece of this is your chest stays really, really tall and I want you to push the knees out and then don't let the knees go anywhere because you're pushing out with the arms, but I want you to squish the knees in to center, okay? You're gonna feel those inner thighs light up for three, for two, and now push the knees all the way back behind you as hard as you can. Feel your glute muscles do that. Push for three, for two, and now same thing. Push the arms into the knees, squish the knees in. As much effort as you can give me, three, two, and push the knees back, three, two, one more time, push the knees out, squish the knees into your arms, three, two, last piece, push the knees back behind you as hard as you can, three, two, and relax, Whew, shake that out, good, we're going to get a nice little stretch of all of that action, first piece is going to look like this, you're going to cross your shin or your ankle, you're gonna pull your chest and your belly button to your shin, and that might be plenty. Just sitting in this position, hinging your chest forward, you should feel some action on the outer side of the hip. If you need more, you're gonna let that knee come down, and you're gonna shift yourself all the way down. Guys, can you, can you take this in another room or what? That's all right, they just wanna play. Can you let yourself have some dynamic motion in all of this too? 
right? So it's not just this stationary static thing. Breathing for three, for two, and come on out of that, shake it out. Okay, same type of deal. Pulling in first, so it's like, can I get that shin to my chest? And can I hinge my chest to my shin? And this might be the winner. You might need to just spend some time here. Otherwise, how low can you get your chest to the shin? Let yourself have some shifts left and right. Find some dynamic motion, breathing. For three. For two. And good. Once that feels balanced, come on out of it. Um, within this next little piece here, hands on your knees. And I want you to lightly put some weight in your knees. And you're going to rise up on your tippy toes and come down. Okay, so we're just adding a little bit of weight into these calf raises as you go down, as you go up. Okay, for three, for two. One more good one. Rise high up on those tippies and come down. Okay, cool. Upper body, great big bear hug, nice big breath. As you exhale, let's all twist to one side. Hold that twist as deep as you can. And now cat, round as much as you can. Twist across the body. Staying in cat, twisting as much as you can. You're gonna come all the way up into cow. Arching through the upper spine, you wanna spread that work out as you twist across to the other side. And as you get there, you're gonna cat and kind of finish this circle. And we'll go back the opposite way. He'll cat, twist, cow, up through center, all the way across and down through it and then this is kind of your party you can switch arms you can change direction as much as you like but odds are there are particular pockets where your body was like oh boy i need some work there and those are the pockets that i want you to pay attention to okay breathing moving dynamically letting yourself shift for three for two <sighs> And once you feel balanced in all of this, hands come by your sides, hands on your knees, and then I want you, one hand, doesn't matter which one, I want you to cross it on top of the other knee. Other hand's gonna go either at your low back or on the seat behind you. Nice big breath. And as you exhale, gently twist. Hold this big breath. And exhale, twist a little deeper. One more breath. And release. Good, come to the other side. So with these passive twists, what I mean by passive, go ahead and find your couple of breaths here as I talk. What I mean by passive is that you're using either something else, gravity, your own body, a block. You're using something to push the body deeper than it could by itself. Now, there's nothing inherently wrong with passive range of motion by itself, but what we want is to have the active range of motion to back all of this up. Once you've found three breaths through this, come on out. Okay, so all of the active strength and active moving stuff that we did through kind of like the middle, um, harder workout portion um, is reinforcing the stuff that we're layering into at the end here, okay? Last piece, um, first, stay as you are, but from the side. I want you to really hold on to the bottoms of your thighs here. Start from the top. This is not about, can I get my chest and my thighs? It's really, can I get the top of my head into my belly button. <laughs> no human can do that, but that helps me to think about it like that. So you're gonna round as hard as you can from the upper body, and then I pull on my low body to round deeper through this space. And the goal here is to just feel a ton of opening through the upper and mid spine, okay? So all of this back tissue through here. Pull yourself, breathe into this space, maybe interlace your hands if that feels good. Breath. For three, for two, excellent. Come on out of that. To counter all of that, hands go either behind you on your seat or at your low back so our low back's not collapsing. And I want you to squeeze your shoulder blades together, push your chest up into the ceiling. Don't just collapse into your neck. So let it be opening up the chest and not crunching the backside. Breath, and out. Ooh. 
Okay, and then the actual final piece is I want us to hit the neck one more time. So do ear to shoulder, chin to shoulder. Great big circle. And you can kind of go in whatever direction feels good to you. Breathing, moving. For three. For two. Excellent. Once that feels balanced, our Shavasana is going to be in a seated position, but if you'd rather lie down on the floor, you can totally do that. Okay, so all the air out of the body, please. Shoulders stay down, great big breath, expand into the rib cage. And breath out. And here's what I want you to do mentally throughout our Shavasana here. It's not about controlling your thoughts. It's not about can you be perfectly happy in stillness. It's, it's not about any of those things that I think sometimes meditation um, gets confused with, right? We're not dominating the mind. In the same way that we've been having a conversation with the body, I want you to have a conversation with basically with your attention. It's not like you're having a conversation with yourself. You're noticing, where does your attention go, right? Is it something coming up? Is it a conversation you had? Is it something that you ate? And the attention can be on something in the past or in the future. And my goal for this small, tiny little bit of time is to just train it to converse with you. And the only time anything actually happens is in the present. We can think about what's going to happen in the future. We can use what happened in the past to try and work on stuff in the future. But the doingness, the actual action, only takes place now. So you just bring the attention into right here. What do you feel? What do you hear? And even with your eyes closed, what do you see? Do you see darkness? Is it the back of your eyelids? Is it colors? Is it a person? Is it a location? And we do all this without judgment or evaluation, right? It's hard to have a conversation with somebody if everything that you say um, is, is judged, right? So we've got to let the attention be able to kind of speak freely. And be like, well, okay, that's a little weird, but whatever, right? I'll keep that to myself. And then the biggest factor for me in terms of how I can breathe and be in the present is by noticing my breath, right? You don't really breathe in the future or in the past. You breathe right now. And if you need more time to be still, A, if this is something that's hard for you, or B, this feels really good, give it a couple extra moments. Otherwise, if you're ready to close out, so movement through your fingers and your toes and your jaw and your face. Any final little movements that might feel good through this, you can do. Otherwise, when you're ready, we'll bring hands to heart, thumbs to forehead, we'll sit up nice and tall, nice big breath in. And on the exhale, we bow. And namaste. And namaste basically means, uh, the translation is that the light in me recognizes and sees the light in you. The, the, the less frou-frou version of all of that is basically, I acknowledge the work that you're doing here. And it's a strange thing because it's me talking to a camera in a room by myself with just my cats running around like crazy. But I also know that it's a little bit of telepathy. Me talking to you, you receiving that, you doing, um, and in, in a huge way that is enormously on you. And so kudos to you. I recognize that. I see that. And I appreciate that. I'm here for you. If you got questions on anything that we did today or anything going on with you in your body, let me know. Appreciate you and have a good rest of the day.